Uh, I'm happy to uh, introduce my old friend, Steve Tabenkin. He's going to tell us about uh, ACES. Thanks a lot, James, and thanks to the Digital Cinema Society for uh, uh, inviting us to speak. Uh, I'm Steve Tabankin, and I'm a filmmaker and producer and director by trade, but uh, I'm here on behalf of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. I'm the marketing and adoption lead for ACES. And um, uh, hopefully you know what ACES is. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what ACES, why ACES is, what it does, what the benefits are, who's using it, and where you can find out more information. Um, and so forgive my uh, rudimentary slides. We had a really busy week uh, this week. We have four events going. This is the fourth. We've got one in Poland. We've got one in New York. We had one in Portland. And of course, we're here in, in Hollywood right now. We also launched a video channel as well as our first uh, newsletter for ACES. So I'll give you some information about those things uh, later on. Um, so ACES is the Academy Color Encoding System. and. Um, Basically, what ACES is, is it's, and I'll, I'll take this slowly, and I'll break it down afterwards. It's a free, open, device-independent system that manages color and image interchange. And it enables the creation of a digital master suitable for long-term archiving. So a lot of modifiers there, but it's actually a very complex uh, color science, sophisticated color science, I should say, but in a way that, that um, productions can use and people who don't need to know the sophistication of it to be able to use it and benefit from it. So it's free. It's, uh, it's open source. You can go to the ACES website and go to GitHub and find out, download the code, download the specifications, download the instructions, and the uh, uh, images from that, um, reference images. It's open. It's not owned by any, any particular manufacturer or company. It was developed by the industry for the industry. It's device independent, so uh, it works on cameras and LUT boxes and displays and uh, color correctors and VFX software and um, all kinds of things from many, many different manufacturers. And what it does basically is manages color, the color pipeline for a television or motion picture production. And it works obviously for commercials and other sorts of things as well. But the higher your, 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 your color information, the more fidelity you start with, I think possibly the more value that ACES has for you. The reason that ACES came about is because we switched from film to digital. And what happened is film workflows, which I did for 20 years, um, had a pretty prescribed, after whatever, 80 years of, of working in film, had a pretty prescribed uh, way to do it. And there was color science, and it was brought to you by Kodak and Fujifilm and the labs and um, um, some of the post-production companies. And it was pretty known science, and everybody pretty well worked at the same. And uh, obviously, when digital came in, it was just an explosion of formats and specifications and color spaces. And, and the reality is there's no, there was no archive anymore. You, you had at least film negative and you had your delivery or your answer prints in film. But of course, with digital, you don't quite know what you have for the most part. So the Academy, who is very interested in preserving um, films and preserving filmmakers' intent, um, took it upon themselves to, to get together a group of top color scientists and engineers and cinematographers and colorists and visual effects people and say, what, how can we attack this problem? How can we address this, this explosion of digital file formats, and particularly when it comes to color? That was a, a pain point, um, and that's how ACES was born. So ACES development took almost 10 years because it's building a, a standard across an industry. Many, many different people with different systems needed to, to buy in. Um, in in uh, December of 2014, we launched the production-ready developer's kit for ACES, ACES 1.0. And so there have been many, many productions, hundreds, that have used ACES so far. They pretty much have all used uh, pre-release versions of ACES. So a lot of the, the learning curve has, has happened already. So ACES 1.0 is solid, and uh, it's been uh, being integrated right now into products. So you can do an ACES workflow now. Hundreds have done it, but it will be easier when it's actually in the products that everyone already uses, the cameras and the displays, and that will happen shortly. It's happening as we speak. Um, some of the high-end benefits or high-level benefits of, of uh, ASUS, uh, obviously you, you create this digital source master. It has the full fidelity of the original elements that you brought in. It doesn't clip. It's a color space that's larger than pretty much any other available, more than your eye can see. So in terms of color, it, um, it, 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 uh, it's the holy grail. It's, uh, it 
protects the filmmaker's creative intent, and this is one of those things with digital that it's important that it's important to the academy too. That uh, you know, if a, a cinematographer and a director want something to look a certain way, they, they sometimes they, the cinematographer can't even follow the production through the way things happen these days. There needs to be a way to to notate what color, what the look of the film or television production is, and uh, ASUS does that does that very well and allows you to set a look and then follow it through or discard it later if you want. But uh, it's up to you. It's a non-destructive process. So you can go back to this master and through the production. You can go back in five days. You can go back in five years, maybe 50 years if you can figure out how to read the media in 50 years, which is outside the scope of ACES. But the Academy is interested in that, in that problem. Um, and you can get back and you can say, this is what this film was supposed to look like in this environment. And so it's a known quantity. One of the things that ASUS does really well is uh, it helps um, manage the use of multiple cameras on set. So if uh, you have an A camera, which could be a, you know, an Alexa or a F65, C500, a RED, or a Vericam, uh, you're always going to have point-of-view cameras on most, most productions. And, and it's tricky to manage those into a color pipeline and to make those look like they, they tone in appropriately. So uh, ACES uh, allows you to encode these all into a color space. It's a common color space, and it does not modify the look of those in the sense that it doesn't make a GoPro look like an Alexa, but allows you to work with them in a, in a certain kind of a color palette, if you will, lack of a better way. Um, it, it also simplifies the effects. As, as we know, on modern films, almost every film has visual effects. Um, sometimes they're managed by multiple companies working on the same scene, on the, you know, uh, one might be in London, one might be in Poland, one might be in Australia, Hollywood. And how do you manage that? How do you make sure that those things can all um, come back into the cut and look proper? And, uh, and ASUS uh, helps you manage that color pipeline to do, so, to do that. Um, it also helps uh, with the creation of multiple delivery formats. If you're a producer or a studio, of course, you know that you're not just delivering for the cinema anymore. You're delivering for, you know, um, 65 millimeter, you're delivering for an iPad, your iPhone. I mean, it's just an explosion of, of deliverables. So um, if you create a high-level uh, ACES master, haven't degraded the image down to Rec. 709, for example, and then have to pop it back up. You're always at a high level. And, um, and then you can create all your deliverables with typically simple trim passes or no trim passes uh, at all, we've been told. Um, and, and finally, it, it uh, helps future-proof because HDR, uh, white color gamut, and other technologies are coming in that are appropriate for uh, maintaining full color uh, um, um, fidelity. ACES is not software that you can download and apply to a movie. So it's not a workflow. It sits next to or on top of your existing or future workflow. And it's not a look. It doesn't make, as I say, cameras look the same. There's no ACES look. Um, what it is is basically a suite of encoding specifications and guidelines, metadata, definitions, developer tools that are typically built into products uh, and then help you manage this process. And uh, while you can download all the stuff from the, the website, uh, the GitHub website, the vast majority of you will never need to know any of that information. I'm a producer. I produce three short films with ACES. I didn't need to know anything except to hire the right DIT and the right post house. That was it. They needed to know some of that information, but I didn't need to know. And many other people, the directors typically don't need to know, cinematographers typically don't need to know, currently uh, offline or creative editors don't need to know. Um, so there's only a few people that really need to get into the weeds on how to do it. Um, and once they are trained and, and, and understand that, um, the process is actually pretty straightforward as other, um, other kinds of things are. Uh, and since it's appropriate to talk about 4K, since we're talking about, uh, about that today, um, ACES is agnostic to, to, uh, to that, to resolution. So it can work in HD, 2K, 4K, 6K, 24K, whatever's coming up. Basically, it, it doesn't matter because it's not managing that part of the process. There's been, um, as I say, hundreds of productions. There's a, a MTV show. There's a uh, dozens and dozens of feature films, Chappie, Oblivion, Lego Movie. was a mostly animated movie that was a... a Basis. So there's a lot of people that have already worked out a lot of the kinks. They know how to do this, and they are helping train and teach people, you know, how to do ACES. Um, if you want to find out what productions have used ASIS, uh, you can go to the uh, Oscars 
org slash aces page and there's two links we're using uh, community in keeping with the spirit of this sort of um, open source community um, basis of aces we're using imdb and shot on what which is user generated content so people are as they finish aces productions they're listing that and uh, so that's how we're keeping track of what productions so if you've worked on an aces production we greatly appreciate you adding those uh, those notes and there's a uh, notation on our on our site saying how to do that um, but so it's 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 new, but it's new ten years in the making. Um, in order to simplify things and um, um, try to make sure that that people in the field have a good um, experience with Asus, what we've done is we've taken these developer kits and we've worked with a number of uh, what we call product partners. We have a, a product partner logo program. So there's 23 companies so far, and there's others that are sort of standing in the wings. We haven't opened it to others, but we are about to, um, that are building ACES technology into their products. Each one's doing it a little different because the um, architecture of their products is a little different, but they're all doing this. And what they're doing is they're building it in, and then they're showing the academy reference frames, reference output frames, and common um, um, UI so that people have a good experience and if, if once that's done, they will get to use the ACES product partner logo next to a product, which basically means that product has been, to some extent, reviewed by the Academy. And yes, this is a product that is, that is a high-quality implementation of ACES. So that would mean when you go to do a production, you chose a camera that, that had ACES and LUT box and display, you should have a reasonably good experience and a you know, color corrector, a reasonably good experience with ACES. You may still have to test, of course like you do with all productions that are sophisticated productions, but this is going to get you uh, quite a bit down the road. Um, and uh, quickly, I'll just give you a couple of uh, places you can go for more information about ACES. Uh, you can always go to uh, oscars.org slash ACES. Um, we just launched, as I say, a video channel with a bunch of videos and panels and things, people talking about ACES, how they used it, problems they solved, how it solved problems for them. Um, you can link to that from our, it, it's linked from our homepage. Um, IMDb and shot on what are productions that have used ACES. So that's that's pretty much the the ten thousand foot view of of ACES. And uh, signed up for our Twitter and our email. And uh, we hope uh, next time someone says uh, ACES, you'll uh, you'll know where to go and you'll be comfortable with that. Thank you very much.